I have one of those old HP logic analyzers, but without the optional LAN interface. I thought it would be a nice thing to have, but wasn't really clear to me uh, what exactly it involved in terms of different hardware or firmware, and I mostly forgot about this. Just uh, recently, though, I stumbled on this post by uh, Jamie Craig, uh, where he figured out what turns out to be pretty minor differences between the basic and the LAN-enabled models. Uh, essentially, it boils, out, boils down to a different I.O. board, which he's showing here. And I decided to try it on mine, so here's how that went. The first thing I did was to trace my own board and combine it with the information on that uh, that blog post for the the wiring for the Ethernet jack. I left out the the BNC option because nobody uses that anymore. And I think it's pretty much complete, except I think there's a few th yeah th that shield connection to the Ethernet jack. Uh, and there's a few things I wasn't quite sure about. And what else? Yeah, the mini DIN 6, I didn't, didn't create a symbol or a footprint for that. Uh, because my first idea was to make a complete replacement board. But you can't get these, so you'd have to remove these. Probably remove the DB25 connector as well. So, uh, just left that idea aside. Next, I took a picture of my uh, back panel, then did a bit of processing to it to bring it straight. I just taped a ruler on it to get a scale, took a bunch of measurements and that. And then I came up with this layout. This is supposed to be... It, it should be very close to the original. Uh, like I said, these two mini DIN 6 connectors, those are just uh, fillers. It's not the right thing. And there's... It, it's, it's incomplete, but everything should be in the right place. What I did next was a trimmed version of this, which I'll open right now. And it's basically uh, only the the 40 pin connector, the, the mag jack, and then the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I removed everything except this narrow strip. The idea would be to mount it using the same holes. And to get the alignment right, what I did was um, cut out a thin piece of uh, of PCB in the right shape, and I mounted it here. You can't see it. It's between the original I.O. board and the rear panel. Like this, right here underneath. And then, oops, wrong way. And uh, Just a visual check that it lined up mostly okay with the opening in the rear panel. And then I pressed in the mag jack. It's not soldered in yet. It's only in the. Uh, it's lined up in the holes. Then I drilled through the original PCB, and then enlarged the holes a bit because I don't want the pins shorting against these strips. These are copper strips. I'm not sure what their function is, but I just cut them away. Uh, like this, around the especially around the data pins, these don't matter too much because these are plastic, and these uh, these are just the sh the metal shield around the the connector. And then the important part was to either cut out or route out, like I did, the inner ground plane, which you can sort of see right here, because I really didn't want any of those pins shorting uh, uh, against uh, the ground plane. And once installed, it looks like this. So the bag, the the mag jack pins go just through the original board, and my add-on is on the other side, uh, like this. Just uh, I put on twisted pairs, but I'm fairly certain it wasn't necessary. All right, let's see if this thing works still. Of course. Ah, uh, the sound of the '90s. So it doesn't detect it yet because I don't have the right firmware. All right, I think I'm going to need the floppy disk for this or transfer the files to the hard disk. 
Uh, yeah, so it can take both. All right, let's... I think I got a floppy drive somewhere. Okay, a bit of a side quest. I found a floppy, found a computer to write files to the floppy. Uh, usually if I was a bit closer to my other workbench, I'd reboot this, uh, load the normal OS here, and you can copy files over the serial port. And then I would have gone with the search hard disk, anyway. Press any key, press the any key, yes, let's go. Not sure why it's flashing the ROM again. It's the same contents, contents, but whatever. Oh, Sierra, Sierra. Okay, hold on. Okay, well this explains it. Uh, probably a bad disc. I'll try another one. All right, so I've just retried two times and eventually got it right. So. Yeah, this is the legendary reliability of three and a half inch drives. I got system land done. That's doing the underscore zero three two, and it should be done after that. Oh wow, that's pretty fast. Okay, press the any key again. Oh, it's gonna try to boot from there. Okay, let's see. Uh, all right. Uh, looks like we got LAN. So I'll move this closer, hook it up to a blue cable, and see if we got internet. All right, well, it's working. There we go, I'm transferring some files. Oops. There we go. Okay, some uh, disassembly notes. Forgot to film this, but now I know better. Uh, first off, this uh, stupid bezel is stupid. Um, it, almost every hole on mine is pre-cracked, and you can't... Well, I didn't figure out how to remove the whole thing. It goes all around from the bottom, all the way around the top, to the bottom again. And there are these little fingers here that force you to stretch open the whole bezel. And the reason you need to do that is to remove these funky pins here. Long plastic pins. They hold the whole card cage, so the floppy and disk drive bracket, the power supply, and the CPU board. And the only reason you want to move that is to change your uh, RAM here, which is a standard 72-pin old-school thing. And those those uh, RAM sticks, they have to pivot up, which you can't do because of this ribbon cable, which you can't remove because everything's so damn tight. So. The only way I figured out was remove, break the bezel, remove it, remove these two pins here, then take off. Uh, actually, no, you don't need to remove this. Once you got the two plastic pins removed, the whole power supply stack sort of just slides left, and it doesn't need to go very far, uh, just to let you uh, pry that uh, ram stick out and the new one back in. Uh, that was one challenge. The other one is getting the rear panel off. It wasn't that bad, except uh, this was a bit nerve-wracking, this uh, whole clip. <laughs> That's a, it's a cable-actuated power switch from the front panel all the way to this power entry module. And uh, I'll try and get a video once I clip it back on. It's a bit tricky. I almost broke it, but just, uh, just safe. Uh, this power supply will need to come off. Uh, this is the serial port and also needs to come off fairly quick because its ribbon cable is super short And you can't really flip that thing down. The fan can stay there. Uh, the BNC connectors can stay there Well, I'm not gonna be able to film this at the same time but this small plastic clip in the middle that's uh, crimped or snapped on the cable end that one goes on the square the smaller square part and this sort of has to 
twist on like that and clip. Uh, yeah. I guess I'm about halfway done and just moved it over. I think I can just uh, snap this one in place. Yeah, not with pliers, <laughs> with two hands, and then I can guide that thing there. And done. It didn't break anything. Let's see if the switch still works. Okay, it's not quite clipped on for some reason. Mm-hmm. Hey, I think I got it now. Yep. It's... Yeah. 